Hello everyone, this video demonstrates and documents the replacement of the drum bearings for a PZ-CM185 drum mower. So while disassembling you might be tempted to also remove all the bearings from the main housing. Now I'd strongly recommend against doing that and that has to do with the tolerances and the play set in the factory. In the footage you're seeing here I've already made that mistake and emptied out the main housing and hopefully with this I can prevent you from making the same mistake. It will potentially save you lots of work and trying to find spare parts. I'd recommend just removing the drums and to do that you have to remove the top cover. If you have a height adjustment on the mower you also have to remove the height adjustment domes. Then you'll have to remove the skid discs. Now, unfortunately, I do not have any footage of removing the top cover, but if you have the height adjustment system with these domes, the first thing you have to do is to release and remove this check nut, this uh, contra nut, and then turn in the thread that is connected to this uh, pin. And this thread is connected through this pin to the skid disc shaft. So remove this nut and then loosen these four bolts on the dome. Keep turning in the thread until you can release the dome. Then you should have access to uh, tap out this pin releasing the skid disc shaft entirely. Looking at the mower while it's partly disassembled, here we can see the mowing shaft that has separated from the drum. And here on the left, they're still stuck together because of rust. And here we see the shafts for the skid disc that normally are inserted into the mowing shaft and spin completely separately from each other. Now onto these mowing drums and uh, mowing shafts normally is also attached the drum skirt or the mowing disc which contains the blade holders and the blades which actually do the mowing. So I removed the cone and the skid disc that normally attaches to the skid disc shaft. You don't have to do that. You can keep everything assembled and just slide it out. Uh, if, if we look here, the skid disc shaft is only attached at the top so once this assembly has been removed you should be able to slide this entire assembly together with the cone and the skid disc out. I've just removed it so it's easier to work with. Now with the cover removed there is access to the bolts that hold the drums to the main frame. The drum is held to the main frame with six bolts, four long ones here they go through the bearing housing into the drum and two short ones on the outside on each side here. Inspecting the drum, the mowing drum that does not voluntarily release from the mowing shaft, we can see that there are years and years of old grease combined with uh, seeped in rainwater that has caused just uh, a mess. After some kinetic persuasion, I was able to separate both and to clean them out. With the mowing shaft in the vise, we can hear the bad bearings. Opening up the part manual, we can see that the top bearing to replace is number 15 and the lower drum bearing to replace is number 14. These are not the same. 14 is a 6211 2RS and 15 is a 6210 2RS, so don't mix those up. The other really important thing to keep in mind is this number 3, the uh, shim set. You can see that the quantity indicated for the number of shims is X. That's because the play and the tolerance is set in the factory. So the type of shim ring can be a one or two millimeter thick and the amount can also differ per mower. So during disassembly, it's 
important to keep track of the location and the thickness of the shim rings. Too much play between the gears can result in a whining noise while mowing. This is already a bit too much free play and could use another shim under the bevel gear. To remove the bevel gear, first remove the retaining circlip, then take care to keep track of the shims. Then to remove the gear itself, it might be best to use some kind of a bearing puller configuration. Although before you can get it behind the gear, you might have to give it a few taps with a big chisel between the gear and the drum to make some room. When the gear is off, be careful not to lose the key. And be aware that shims can exist on top of the gear and also underneath the gear, between the gear and the bearing. The shaft can be separated from the drum at this point with just a few taps. Here's some shims that were underneath the gear. In my case the lower bearing came out with the shaft. This was the case for me for both drums. Uh, one I was able to remove by uh, tapping at it and using a bearing puller, but the other one I took an angle grinder to it. Just be careful not to damage the shaft. To remove the upper bearing, we have to first remove the oil seal. If the o-ring is still there, be careful to hang on to it. After prying away the oil seal and cleaning the grease, you'll be able to see the circlip. After removing the circlip, the bearing can be tapped out from the other side. Now we can start rebuilding with a new bearing. And the new oil seal. And after everything's been cleaned and put back together, it should sound more like this. Make sure to replace the correct amount of shims. I found it useful to tap the bevel gear back onto the shaft using a size 41 socket. When putting everything back together, remember to clean the main frame of old grease and put in fresh new grease. The manual says the following about it. The gearbox is filled with PZ Cyclo EP0 grease and does not require maintenance. If in the event of a repair extra grease is needed, only this or an equivalent grade EP0 grease should be used. The grease level should be to the bottom of the horizontal shaft, 6 kilograms or 13.2 pounds. After the grease, remember to put in a new gasket before putting the cover back on and rebuilding the rest of the mower. I hope this has been informative, good luck and thanks for watching.